What a blessing to be here. Amen. You know, it takes a lot of people to to run a church. Yeah. Back in, in Ciudad Victoria, I remember that we we were honoring those people that help us on a weekly basis, you know, just doing from bus driving to all kinds. Of, it was over 450 people it took to just run one church service. So you guys have a lot of people here. You may think, well, this is a small church. Well, it takes a lot of people. It, it takes a lot of people to do the things that you do. And you know what? It, everybody gets rewarded. And uh, the best reward is when God does it. Amen. Okay? He knows how to reward things. He knows how to pay. He knows, uh, for God, payday doesn't always come on the 1st and the 15th, okay? But it does come, okay? Amen. But yes. God will always make things happen in your life. And, Amen. Uh, I remember uh, listening to Keith Moore. He was teaching on uh, people that didn't have jobs. And uh, he would just say that uh, they would come to church and, and they just volunteer to, you know, do something, pick up trash or something. And he said, by the time you know it, a week, a week and a half, and they were at a job. And it was just like, you sow... You do something, God does something. You, you, you activate your faith. You begin to do something. And uh, when you do, I'm telling you, there's no, play, no better place to volunteer than your church. Okay. There's, there's, there's a lot of things that can be done here, a lot of things that pastor would need. And, uh, well, I was, we, we've been in, in the States for three weeks now, and, and uh, the church in Mexico is doing well. We're doing very well. And so this morning, I just... I uh, thought I'd share with you a little bit on the anointing. And uh, just the anointing is the power of God. And the anointing is God's presence in a place. His presence is here. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered in His name, two or three are gathered in His name, He is there in the midst of them. So He's there. He's here. He's here. Can you tell your neighbor, He's here. He's here. The Lord is here. The Spirit of God is here. The presence of God is here. Amen. The power of God is here. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's here to supply every need. It, it's here to heal people. That's right. It's here to deliver people. It's here to prosper people. It, it's here, you know, going to church should be a, a, an event where, I mean, when you go to church, anything can happen. Yes. Anything can happen. You know, we... Back in December, I, I was in, in November, I was in, in Colombia, and uh, I was ministering, and I was telling the people that when I was a kid, um, we grew up in church, and, and, and when I was a kid, I knew the scripture that said it is more blessed to give than to receive, but I didn't understand it, because as a kid, I mean, you just want to have, you know, you don't want to give. <laughs> and, and so, as a kid, I didn't have that understanding, but when I grew up, and, and as, as, as I got revelation, I, I, I learned that it's better to give than to receive. That it's, it's, more, it's, it's, it's more profitable. It's, it's better to give than to receive. And so, you know, as, as, as I began to grow in that revelation, I was telling the people in Colombia that I had, you know, I had bought, I had, we were leaving and I had left uh, some money with, with our uh, assistant pastor to buy some tires for a family from the church. Because I noticed when, when, when I was greeting them, they got off their car and I noticed that the tires were bald. Okay, they, were, they, they didn't have any thread on them. And so I just, you know, I didn't tell them I'm going to buy you tires. I just, you know, I just left money. And we went to Colombia and, um, you know, just were ministering there. And I was sharing with the people how we need to, you know, like Norma was saying, each member ministers to each other. And, and the body fitly join it together and it, it just helps each other and, it, and, it, and when, when this happens there's, there's power released and there's growth and there's, there's increase, there's all kinds of things that happen when, when we begin to open our hearts and just look around us and, and there's something that you can do for somebody, there's something that you can help somebody with, there's something that and when, when that happens the body of Christ is doing its function and it's growing and it's, and it's, and it's being fortified it's, it's being strengthened. And so, you know, Victor sent me an email during the week, and he said, Pastor, I bought the two tires you asked me. Let me see. Let's get this thing. Can you thing. Up just a little higher? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? No. No? No, now let's <laughs> Norma, can you help him? I am sorry, Pastor. I'm so sorry. Right here? I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah, okay. And so, you know, uh, he sent me an email. He said, Pastor, we bought the two tires, and I have enough money. Maybe we need to lower it now. Uh, I have enough money to buy another two. I said, well, buy all four of them. 
I mean, you know, I thought we could only buy two with the money that I left, but but it turns out that we were able to buy four brand new tires. You think that's that's a blessing for somebody? Yeah. I mean, if somebody came and bought you four brand new tires, would that be a blessing for you? Amen. Amen. Would would that you know would that help you? Okay. So I'm just sharing that with the people, and I said, you know, I'm I'm just believing God. I'm I'm just believing God to give away a vehicle to a family that's on our staff because they were walking. They were coming from, they came from, uh, they, they came from, from another state, and uh, they just came to, to be in the church, they wanted to be in the church, and so they, they left their home, they left their job, and they came, and they brought their kids, and they want to sit under the anointing, and so they're, they're walking to school to drop off their kids, and in, in Pachuca, Hidalgo, it's cold in the mornings, and it can rain, and so, I mean, walking your kids in, in the cold is, is hard. And so, uh, I was believing God, you know, uh, just to give them a vehicle. You know, I, don't, I didn't have a vehicle to give them. But, you know, that doesn't have to stop you. Okay? That, that's where the anointing comes in. That's where the Word of God comes in. That's when, 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 see, God said that He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And a lot of times, that we, you know, God will put a desire in our heart, and, and we just don't follow through with it. But God's not going to take it even, He won't even take it from your paycheck. He'll supply what you need to give somebody. Amen. He'll put it in your hands if you'll just pass it on. He'll give it to you if you'll just, you, you just be faithful to give it to that person. And so uh, I was telling the people in Colombia that I was believing God for a vehicle. So I get back home the next week. I get an inbox. And uh, a businessman, he sent me an inbox. And he says, brother, I was going to buy a brand new vehicle. I was going to trade my vehicle in in Mexico or sell it. He said, but God said not to do it. He said to give it to you because you know what to do with it. Amen. So he gave me a, a Ford EcoSport SUV. And so he got it all cleaned up, got it serviced. And everything was working on it and everything. Very nice vehicle. And so one Sunday morning in uh, last month, we just, you know, these people came to, they came to church walking and they left in a vehicle. Do you think that's a blessing for somebody? Yeah. I mean, how, you know, None of you came walking, okay? <laughs> but in Mexico, it's very common for people to walk. And so we're, we're here to, to bless each other. We're here to, to take care of each other. We're here, and the anointing, God has anointed us. If, if you'll go with me in, in the scriptures, if you'll go with me to Isaiah chapter 10, and I'll share a few more testimonies with you. This week we saw a woman that broke her back. Okay? She couldn't walk. She couldn't, she couldn't dress herself. Her husband was dressing her, having to take her to church, having to take her to school, to go into Bible school. Many times the, the dean of the school spoke, talk, talked to me and he said, I've been dealing with this case because she can't come many days. She just cannot get out of school. And I'll tell you, uh, I was doing a class for them and the presence of the Holy Ghost was so strong in that class. We were teaching on the move of the Spirit. And the presence was so strong, I didn't even lay hands on her. The lady got up, and she just yelled, Jesus healed me, and her eyes were this big. And she began to bend, she began to move, she began to do what she couldn't. She said, last night I was in the emergency room because I could not stand the pain. My husband took me to the hospital yesterday, and Jesus healed me. I'm telling you, the presence of God can heal somebody, and, and they don't have to touch you. I mean, I don't have to touch you. God can heal you wherever you are. God can provide for you wherever you are. See, when, when the anointing is in a place, and there's, a, there's an anointing in this church, there's an anointing upon these pastors, and when you come here and you listen to the Word, the anointing will teach you things. The anointing will show you things. The anointing will, will, will bring up things in your life. The anointing will show you what to do. The anointing will teach you all things. The Bible says that the anointing that's in us teaches us all things and we don't need that anyone teach us but it, it doesn't mean that you don't need to come to church <laughs> okay right. the, the Holy Ghost can teach you things but, but man if you get under the place where there's an anointed minister where there's an anointed man of God or a woman of God and, and they're, they're preaching the word that word will reveal things to you that word will bring things out to you that word will heal you that word will prosper you that word will put you in a place and I'm telling you that we were just sharing I mean we we were just sharing on the Holy Ghost. He, you know the Holy Ghost is here this morning? Yeah. Amen. You know the 
Holy Ghost is here this morning. His presence is here. Two or three are gathered here. I think we qualify now. I mean, Amen. two or three, we're gathered here. <laughs> Jesus is here. Amen? Amen? And anything can happen. See, you ran the risk of coming to church today. You ran the risk of coming here and being healed. <laughs> you, you ran the risk of coming here and being blessed. Can you imagine those people? They didn't know they were going to get a, a vehicle on that Sunday morning. They had no idea. They, they had no clue. But you know, God is so, so, he's so wonderful. He's so good that they, they told me later after we gave him the vehicle, he said, Pastor, we, we walked by this house and we love this truck that was there. It's a Ford Echo Sport. And we would pray and we would say, Lord, we like that truck. We would want one of those trucks. We're believing for one of those trucks. And you know what the truck that we gave him was? A Ford Echo Sport, just like the one that they walked by. You know, God has a way of, of, of just fulfilling your heart's desires. Amen? Amen. He said, delight thyself in the Lord and he'll grant you the desires of your heart. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. All you have to do is just delight yourself in the Lord. You just have to delight yourself in the Lord. What does that mean? That means that you just, you, you just, you're blessed just being with God. You just thank Him. You just thank Him for it. Are you, are you there already at uh, Isaiah 10, 27? Let me read the scripture for you. It's going to be out of the Message Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you didn't like the message Bible. I read it some, sometimes. <laughs> I don't preach out of it. It shall come to pass in that day that, that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. It says the anointing. The anointing is God's power to, to deliver. The anointing is God's power to set people free. When the anointing is present in places, healing is happening. You remember when Jesus was walking down the road and a woman came up and, and she came behind him. It's in Mark chapter 5. And, and it talks about this woman coming in behind Jesus in the press. And she, it says that, that she had been suffering for many years. She had an issue of blood. And the Bible says that she came in behind and touched his garment. He, he touched his, it, it touched his clothes. He, it didn't touch, he did, she did not touch Jesus physically in his body. She touched the hem of his garment. He touched the, 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 the hem of his coat or, or of his uh, whatever clothing he was wearing. And it says that power came out. That, that, that power is anointing. That power is the anointing of God. It's the manifest presence of God. Wherever, the, I'm telling you, that manifest presence of God is here this morning. It'll heal you. It'll deliver you. It'll strengthen you. It'll give you wisdom. It'll show you things that you need to do. It'll, it'll, it'll teach you how to get out of debt. It'll teach you how to get out of trouble. I'm telling you, it'll, it, I, I'm telling you the anointing of God, if you, just put a, if you just put a demand on the anointing of God, things will happen. Words will come. God will show you things. God will deliver you. God will give you instructions. And I'm telling you, the Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing takes the yoke and he breaks it. See, when, when the anointing breaks the yoke, it means that it cannot be put back. Amen. Amen? That's right. Hallelujah. When God delivers you, you're delivered. When God saves you, you're saved. Hallelujah. When God heals you, you got healing. Amen? When God prospers you, you got prosperity. And, and you can continue to live in that area. You can continue to live there. You know, Let, let's go to another scripture. The Bible says in, in Psalm 92, verse 10, talking about the anointing. Psalm 92, verse 10. It says, but my, but my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. You know, God wants, wants us anointed. Amen? We are the anointed of God. The anointed of God, Jesus Christ, makes his life inside of you. I'm telling you, the anointed of God lives inside this man. And because the anointed of God lives inside this man, the anointing of God is in him. The anointing of God is on him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the gift. 
Stir up the gift of God that's in you by the laying on of my hands. In the Spanish it says to stir up the fire of the gift of God that's in you. I'm telling you, there's a fire inside of us. Amen? There's an anointing fire inside of us. There's power inside of us. There's fire inside of us. You know, this, this woman, she said, I wasn't aware that she was sitting there. I wasn't aware that she had broken her back several months back. I wasn't aware that she was in great pain. I, I mean, I wasn't aware that she was there. We were just sharing on the power of the Holy Spirit. We were just sharing on the power of God. We were just sharing on the anointing. And that presence, that anointing is there, got there, was manifesting there. And all of a sudden, she gets up from her chair and she starts yelling, Jesus, heal me. And I'm telling you, she starts moving and she starts going. And when she started moving, the whole class went wild. Because, you know why? Because they all know what was wrong with her. They all knew what was wrong with her. They all knew she had broken her back. There was another lady there with a brace in her hand. And as I was going by, I just grabbed her hand. If you'll give me your hand. It was the other hand. <laughs> of course, you weren't there. But she had a brace in her hand. And, and she said she had fallen and she had, she said, I, I literally thought I had broken the wrist on my hand. And, and she says, so I, so I went to the doctor and he put this brace on me. And, and she, he said, I could not move my hand. I could not move my hand. But as I went by, she just, I just grabbed her hand. And as I grabbed her hand, the anointing touched her. And I'm telling you, she took the brace off and she was going like this. I mean, she was moving her knuckle. I mean, she was moving her hand. And she said, God, heal me. I'm telling you, there's healing power in the anointing. That woman with the issue of blood, she had suffered many things by many physicians. And she said it just grew worse. She had spent all her money. She had gone to every doctor that was recommended. She had gone to do everything she could do. But then she heard about Jesus. The Bible says that she heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, something happened inside of her. When she heard about Jesus, that Jesus was the healer. Well, you, I don't know what she heard. She maybe heard that Jesus stopped the, uh, the, the, the just, just the funeral that was going by in this lady, that, that God, just Jesus just uh, stopped this funeral and, and resurrected this young man and gave him back to his mother. I don't know what she heard. Maybe she heard that Jesus opened the blind eyes of Bartimaeus. Maybe Jesus heard that, that the leper was cleansed. She heard that Jesus has cleansed the leper. I don't know what she heard, but whatever it was that she heard caused something inside of her to come and come in behind in the press and just touch Jesus' garment. And when she touched his garment, the Bible says that power went out of him. Hallelujah. You know what power is? Power is the anointing of God. Power is delivering anointing from God and that power is for us today. That power can touch us today. That power can heal you today. That power can deliver you today. That power can, can give you wisdom today. That power can, can bring the, the goodness of God upon your life today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This woman, she came in and she just, I mean, how many of you have been somewhere and somebody touches your clothes? You don't, you don't know if they touch your clothes or not. But this was something different. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing is real. The anointing is the power of God to deliver people. The anointing is the, the, the manifest presence of God. The anointing, you know, it, it'll touch people. It'll heal people. It'll deliver people. The anointing will, will touch the hearts of people. The anointing will, will, will just touch the most, the most inner being of the soul, of the heart of man. The anointing will touch people. Wherever they hurt, wherever they need, whatever they need, the anointing will supply it for them. You know, if the anointing will supply for people just healing. The anointing. Amen. It's the presence of God. Amen. That's right. And, and it's in us, the anointing. And we can, and, and just like Norma was reading in that scripture, we, we can take the anointing that's on our life and minister to other people. We can take the anointing that's on our life and just minister to other people. We can minister to their needs. 
We can minister to their, to their bodies. We can minister to their, their souls. You know, in that same class that morning, this man just began to weep. He began to cry. He, he just, I mean, he's a grown man. He's about 60 years old. And he, all of a sudden, you know, all on this side of the room, he begins to weep. He begins to laugh. And he gets up. And so I asked him, what happened? He said, God healed me this morning of a broken heart. He says, for 40 years I have suffered, he said, because of a broken heart. And you know what? The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is on me, for He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there are things that happen in life. There are things that happen in our lives that, that our hearts get messed up, that our hearts get broken. There are things that happen in the lives of people. There are things that happen as you go through life. But I'm telling you, the anointing is here to heal broken hearts. Hallelujah. The, the anointing is here to set the captives free. The enemy would want to keep you captive. The enemy would want to keep you a prisoner. The enemy would want to keep you sick. The enemy would want to keep you poor. But the anointing of God is here to heal, to deliver, and to prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, the anointing is real. You can, yes. you can sense it. You can, you can feel the presence of God. <laughs> I know we're faith people. You say, well, you know, I don't go by feelings, but I'm telling you, if the anointing's there, you, you, will, you will feel the anointing. It, it's real. The anointing is real. The presence of God is real. It's here this morning. The anointing is here. The presence of God is here this morning. I'm telling you, people are, are, are getting healed this morning, even while you're sitting here. The presence of God is here. The, the presence of God is speaking to the hearts of people. The presence of God is real. I'm telling you, as, as we were, well, I got an email yesterday, and there was people that were being delivered. We were in order, they, they, they brought in the whole uh, first year, second year, and third year at Rima, at uh, Andrew Womack's uh, Bible School in Colorado. And I did a two-hour session on the move of the Spirit and just stirring themselves up with the Holy Ghost. And there was people laying out all over the auditorium. And this young man followed me. He was a photographer. <coughs> he was following me, just taking photographs of what was happening. And he wrote me and he said, as I was with you, he said, I saw, he said, I got a glimpse. He said, I got a glimpse of what maybe it could have been when Jesus was walking in the earth. He said, I saw people getting healed. I was taking pictures of people getting delivered from demons on the floor. He said, I saw people just, just under the joy of the Lord. I saw people that I knew. And, and you know, the, the anointing will touch the lives of people. Amen? The anointing will touch the lives of people. The anointing is God's manifestation presence. It's God's power. Hallelujah. It, it's God's presence. The anointing is real. It'll touch your life. Hallelujah. Oh, it, it's on you right here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The anointing is real. Yes. Man's It's touching his heart. Thank you, Father, for the fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, I, I don't know this young man. I, I don't know who he is, but I can... Uh, something's going on. Some, something's going on. Can I just pray for you? Yeah. Laser has to help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you need. Fine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's not important that you fall. It's not important. That's not the important part. It's when the anointing is present and you lay hands on people, the Bible says that there's an impartation. The Bible teaches us that there's an impartation. Things happen. Things happen. People get healed. People get delivered. People get prospered. People get, get just God shows them things. God will, God will give them wisdom. Mark, you come give them praise. Hallelujah. Raise your hands to Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 
thank you for the anointing that teaches him and meet him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's come here. Let me pray for you. You know, the, the anointing will teach you things. You can be in a service where the anointing is and you get, you, you get an inspired thought by God. It's something that will just rise up in your heart. You know what you need to do when that happens? You just need to go and act it out. You just need to, you, you need to follow up on it and just say, God, what do I do here? You want me to do this? What do you want me to do? And as you begin to speak to God about what he showed you in the anointing, he'll begin to lead you. He'll begin to guide you. And I'm telling you, he'll get you out of trouble. He'll get you out of debt. He'll get you out of situations. He'll get you out of circumstances. He'll give you wisdom. Take it now. Now. There it is. Take it now. The, the anointing. The anointing will touch the lives of people. I, I have seen people just like this man. He said, 40 years. Can you imagine? Can you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 4, please, real quick? I'm talking about the anointing. We're going to pray in a few minutes. Some, some of you, I may not even have to pray for you. But Jesus said these words, but these very same words are part of our, as a believer, these things are activated in us too. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you say that with me? The Spirit of the Lord is upon, is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Well, look, look what he has anointed me to do. He says he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Wow, thank God that God doesn't want us poor. Amen? Amen. The very first group of people that Jesus went to minister to or was anointed to minister to, the, the very first group of people that Jesus was, was anointed to minister to was the poor. And what do you think he told the poor? You think he told them, that's my will for you? No. He, you know, when, when Jesus went to minister to the poor, the good news to a poor man is that he doesn't have to be poor anymore. Amen. The good news to a poor person is that you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen? The good news to a poor person is you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. You don't have to be this way. You don't have to live this way. There is a better way to live. There's a better way. God has a better way for you. God has things for you. God has provision for you. God has His Word. Hallelujah. And, and that Word begins to bring life to them. That, that Word, that Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It, they may have recited it for thousands of times before that, but when when the anointing comes, when the anointing of Jesus comes, when the, when the life of God God comes on that word uh, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want man all of a sudden it's different man. Amen. all of a sudden it's different all of a sudden it's it's different it, it's different my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus all of a sudden that word because of the anointing takes on a different meaning takes on a different part it becomes a rhema and I'm telling you when you speak it out of your mouth when you begin to release the word out of your mouth when you begin to release that anointed word out of your mouth it changes your circumstances it changes your living your living lifestyle it changes your economy hallelujah it changes things. Amen. Amen? Amen. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, for he has anointed me to preach, uh, to, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Imagine, this man is sitting there. We don't even, we didn't even lay hands on him. But because of the manifest presence of God that's there, God was working in his heart, touching his heart. And all of a sudden, he burst out and into tears he cried and then all of a sudden he burst out into laughter and then he said the pain is gone I'm telling you when you have a broken heart you can put on a face you, you can put on some you know a facade and people can see you and they say well there doesn't seem like there's nothing wrong with them but inside you're hurting inside you're crying inside you hurt and when you're alone you really hurt and when you're lonely, you really hurt. But I'm telling you, when Jesus came, when Jesus comes, He heals the broken heart. Hallelujah. And you know what He does? He does. 
He, he, he gives you a new heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, he gives you a, a healed heart. You, you no longer have pain there. You may have, you, you may recall the incident. You may recall the thing that caused it. You may recall what caused that, but there's no more pain because God has healed your heart. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you this morning, God is healing hearts. God is touching hearts this morning. God is the healer of hearts. Jesus Christ is the healer of hearts. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will, he will cleanse you. He'll, he'll put you in a place, in a position where, where you get healed from your heart. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, when your heart gets healed, things change in your life. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. And when your heart gets healed, I'm telling you, healing pours out to every area of your life. See, the anointing is for this. This, this is why we come to church. This is why Pastor uh, Carl prepares a message every week. This is why he preaches the word. This is why he, he, he uses his gift as a teacher. That's why he brings the word. And when the word comes, you, you, just need to, you just need to draw from the anointing that's upon his life. You just need to draw from the anointing that's upon his life. That anointing, there's an anointing for healing upon his life. There's a, an anointing for, to, to show you the word of God, to reveal the word of God to you and when you do that I'm telling you God will God will deliver you God, God will will change your life it'll change your life just sitting under a place of anointing see brothers and sisters right now we have a lot of churches that have a lot of that have very good music they have very good things but there is no time for the anointing <coughs> Everything has to be done in a hurry because we got to get them in and get them out so that we can get another group in and another group out so we can get another group in and another group out. Okay, that's good that they're growing, but, but people are, it's, it's just like going in and going back out. They came, they went in one way and they came out the same way. They, they, they were not changed. You know what the anointing does? The anointing will change your life. Yes. Amen. The anointing will change your life circumstances. The anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is the presence of God. The anointing is the manifest presence of God. And the anointing can come during the praise and worship, or it can come during the word, or it can come during the offering. It can come at any time. The presence of God can fall in a place yes. at any time. Yes. You don't have to be singing. You don't have to be dancing. You can be there listening to the word, and all of a sudden, the anointing of God will drop in a place, and it will heal people. It It'll speak to the hearts of people. It'll show people where they're wrong. It'll show people where they need to correct their life. It'll show people what they need to do. It'll give them instruction for their life. It'll give them direction. And you know what? Many times, that, that anointing, the Bible says the anointing teaches you all things. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Praise Holy God. Ghost. God. You know what? If I don't know it, that doesn't mean I'm limited. The Holy Ghost knows it. Amen. Amen. If I don't know how to do something, that doesn't mean I can't do it. The Holy Ghost can teach you how to do it. If you don't know, if you don't know something, that doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're set back or you have a limitation. If you'll just draw on the Holy Ghost, He'll show you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you'll just draw on the Holy Ghost, He'll teach you all things. Hallelujah. Amen. He knows all things. He knows everything. He's all-knowing, and He will teach you. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, healed of a broken heart 40 years as I heard him testify. This lady, she testified also of a, being healed of a broken heart. You know, she was married, didn't love her husband. Can you imagine being married for 40 years and you don't love your husband? We know cases. The anointing can heal hearts. I know my, my wife tells the story of her mother. You know, as pastors, we don't, I mean, we have moms and dads too, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and they, they let us know what they think too, <laughs> you know. And, I mean, they have the rightful place. They're your mom, they're your dad. Mom and dad will always be mom and dad. But the Holy Ghost is, uh, trumps mom and dad. Yes, yes. Okay. The Holy Ghost has the final word. Amen. 
See, mom and dad can have a word for you, and it, it'll be out of a love relationship. But many times it's what, many times it'll be, you know, what they see. But we'll have to depend. The Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. It's not said, it doesn't say that those that are led by their mom and dad are, you know, no. No, it's those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the, the, the sons of God. And so, you know, we, we have to listen to the Holy Ghost. We have to follow the Spirit of God. We have to you just, just hear the voice of the Spirit of God. And we have to listen to that voice. But she said, uh, my, my, my wife's mother one day asked her, she had, she had had cancer and, and she was working through that. And, and she, she uh, called my wife and she says, I want to talk to you not as a daughter. She said, I want to talk to you as a pastor. And so my wife didn't know what was coming up next. And so uh, she's, she's in the bedroom and you can see into the living room. And she says, you see that man over there? He said, he's made my life miserable for the last 48 years, 40 years. He stole my youth. I hate him. I mean, as a daughter, that's your dad over there. That's your mom over here. But as a pastor, you have to be able to hear people and listen to people. Sometimes it might be your mother or brother or sister. And it's not what you think. It's what the Holy Ghost thinks. It's what the Holy Ghost says. It's not, it, it's not what you've done before. It's, it's not the experience that you have. It's what the Holy Ghost wants to do for that situation. And Ernie says, I, I felt totally overwhelmed. And, and so I said, Mom, I'm going to pray. And so we prayed together because it was really heavy on our heart. What, what can she do? There is her mom and dad living in a house by themselves. She's getting over cancer. And now you know that, that, that she hates him. So how, how, how do you minister to something like that? I mean, 30 hours of counseling is not going to cut it. 20 hours of counseling is not going to cut this. How do you heal a broken heart? How, how do you get people straightened out? How do you heal them? Well, we had had some meetings and we had had some revival meetings and there was the, the, this power of God, the manifest power of God was in these revival meetings and we, we got them caught on, on video. And so I'm telling you, the anointing gets captured on those video cameras. Amen. The anointing, you, you can watch a 10-year-old service that was anointed, and that same anointing, as you watch it, it's still on there. That manifest presence of God is still on there. That presence of God will be on that video, and you can perceive, you can feel the presence of God. And I'm telling you, I, I told Ernie, well, why don't we take her one of these videos and just have her, have her just look at it. Okay? These were powerful meetings. The anointing was there. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know what to do. But see, when you don't know what to do, the Holy Ghost will lead you. Amen. Amen. The presence of God will lead you. When you don't know what to do, when, when you don't know how to answer, you don't have to give an answer right there and then. Just depend on the Holy Ghost and He'll give you an answer. You don't have to do something right there and then. Just, just draw on the Spirit of God. Just draw on the presence of God and He'll show you. And so we brought that, the next time we came into town, we brought that, it was, back then it was VCRs, you know, those big tapes. And, and so... My, my mother-in-law asked, she's, she's telling us this testimony, and she asked my father-in-law, because he's the one that knew how to put the tape in, and she was having trouble even keeping her eyes open, but she could hear. And so she said, would, would you watch this with me? Could you put this on for me? And so they put this video on, and uh, it had all the music, it had all the preaching. But I'm telling you, on that video was an anointed service. The presence of God was there. And she tells Ernie, she told my wife that when, when they found out, I mean, she said, when we, when we came to, something happened. They were both kneeling in front of the TV, hugging each other and hugging the TV. And she said, God healed my heart. And that love for her husband was back. She says, I don't know when it happened. She says, I don't know how it happened. But all of a sudden, she said, we're both 
this man who was so hard, this man who was so stubborn, this man, but the Spirit of God, he knows how to deal with the hearts of men. He knows how to deal with the hearts of women. He knows how to deal with the hearts of your children. And father and mother, mother and father, what we need in our house, we need the anointing in our house. We need the presence of God in our house. We need the manifest presence of God in our house for our children. They need to know this presence. They need to know this manifest presence of God. And you don't have to go get Pastor Carl to live in your house. <laughs> okay? You don't have to go get somebody. You are anointed. Mom and dad, there is an anointing upon your life. There is an anointing upon your life. There is an anointing upon your life. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. I'm telling you, I put a demand on that word in my house and Ernie and I are there, so the presence of God is there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We had a maid that worked for us for 20 years in Ciudad Victoria, Alicia. Is her name. Uh, she's family. And she would tell me, she said, I love coming to work here. She would clean for Ernie. She would bake. She would cook. She did everything for us. She'd pack our bags, unpack our bags. She, she knew everything in the house. And she says, I love to come to work here. She says, because there's a presence here. There's an anointing in this house. There is a presence here. Yeah, okay, that was pastor's house. But it does, the Bible doesn't say that, that where two or three pastors are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. No, it says where two or three are gathered. I'm telling you, hallelujah. The presence of God. He said, but I live alone. I don't care. Jesus is there. The Holy Ghost is there. God is there. And you, there's four of you already. Okay? He's there. Hallelujah. He's there. And you just put a demand on the presence of God. You just put a demand on the Spirit of God. And things are going to happen in your house. Things are going to happen on your in your life. Things are going to happen to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we did a meeting, and I'll, I'll close with this. We did a meeting in, in December, and we wanted to, we're going to start doing some, some meetings in different cities, and they're like crusades. There'll be salvation, healing, and, and Holy Ghost meetings. But uh, we started practicing. And so we, we did a two-day, a Saturday night and a Sunday morning healings, and so we invited people. We invited people to come in to bring people. And so we're praying for people. And there's this young lady. And uh, I called out. The, the Holy Ghost showed me there was people there that had problems with her knee. And I didn't know this, this girl comes to church. But I didn't know she had a problem. So I see her in the, in, in, in the prayer line. And I said, what's wrong with you? She says, when I was a little girl, I was riding in the back of a pickup. And the tailgate opened. And she said, and I flew out. And she said, as I, as I landed on the pavement, my knee got broke. She said, and they put it back. They put a cast on it. They took me to the doctor. They put a cast on my knee. And she says, but, but it never healed correctly. And she said, I could walk. I could stand. But the only thing I couldn't do, she said, I could not kneel. If I would kneel, it was like sharp pain would just, it was like there was a bone out of place. And so when, when, I, when I gave the word, she's up at the altar. And all I said was, when I lay hands on you, see the anointing. When I lay hands on you, it's time to release your faith. When I lay hands on you, it's time to release your faith. And so I said, when, you, when I lay hands on you, you do something you couldn't do. She startled me. She scared me. I mean, I laid hands on her head and she dropped from a standing position to her knees. And when she did, she began to weep. She began to cry, and her mother was next to her. She's a, her mother's an usher, and she was standing next to her, and I said, what happened? She said, she can't kneel. Mm -hmm. She can't kneel, and the girl gets back up and drops to her knees again, and she gets up, and she drops to her knees again. You know what happened? God healed that bone. God put that bone back into place, that bone, for what, what she couldn't do. She couldn't kneel. She couldn't kneel because there was a broken bone in her body. I'm telling you, when the anointing is there, things will happen. When the anointing is there, healings will happen. When the anointing is there, God will show you things. When the anointing is there, the presence of God will teach you things. It'll show you things. It'll heal you. It'll deliver you. It'll tell you to do things. The anointing will tell you to do things. You can be sitting in a service and the anointing will tell you to do something for somebody. I've had people sitting in a, in, in a service and they run out of the service to go to the ATM. 
you think, why would they leave the service to go to an ATM? Because the anointing told them to do something for somebody and they didn't have it with them to do it. I mean, the anointing will teach you things. The anointing will teach you. Lena, let me pray for you. The power of God has been touching you this morning. Can, can I get some help? Lift your hands to heaven. Just receive it. Thank you, Father, for the fire in your life. Thank you. Take it now. Take it now. Hallelujah. As you pray for people, as you lay hands on them, the healing power will manifest. As you minister to people, as you speak to them, the healing power, the Holy Ghost will give you words. Now, take it now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 The Word of God, the healing power. People are being healed here this morning. You just begin to do what you couldn't do. Begin to move. Begin to move that part of your body that had pain. This morning you find out you got healed while, while the service was on. I mean, the anointing is here. The presence of God. Sometimes it's just a, just a sweet presence of the Lord. Just, just ministering to people. Just speaking to the hearts of people right where they're at. Just teaching them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray for Anna and Israel. Thank you. Thank you for wisdom. I thank you for wisdom. The Bible says that you give us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, you give them wisdom in the name of Jesus. Just the wisdom of God. Even at night, you'll teach them things. Oh, Father, they'll wake up with a they'll wake up with a, a thought. And you'll be teaching them things, how to do it, who to talk to, how to go about it, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, just, just, just move, come over here, let me move your arm, just, God's healing your, your shoulder there, is there something that you couldn't do with it, it hurts, okay, you ready? When I lay my hands on you, power of God will come on you. You just begin to do something you couldn't do. Okay? Ready? Be healed now. There it is. There it is. Just begin to do something you couldn't do. Just begin to move it. There. There it is. Just, just do it. Move it. Move it. Move it. In the name of Jesus. There it is. Hallelujah. It's popping. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. That woman's back popped. She said she heard a popping noise. And whatever was broke in her back, whatever was broke, just got into place. And I'm telling you, she jumped up. She, I mean, I'm, I'm standing in the row, and I see her jump up, and her eyes are like bugged out. You know, she was surprised that she was healed too. I don't even think she was operating in faith. I'm telling you, I mean, when God's presence is there, things will happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Also, I'll wait for <laughs> go ahead, go, go. Is it better? Yes. Oh, it went from here to here. Well, it's going out then. Okay. <laughs> Come on, pain, you go now. Now, now, now. In Jesus' name. Now. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. The, the, the presence of God is real. People, I mean, the, the presence of God is real. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody's being healed. You have pain in your heel. It's in a talon. Somebody's got pain. And who is it? It's got pain. It's, it's, it's like a sharp pain in your heel. See, I would rather, I mean, miss it than somebody go home with the pain. Okay? So I'm not, you know, the pain. Is that you, Norma? No, um, but I was having, my ankle was hurting earlier, uh -huh. and it's not hurting anymore. Okay, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody, pain in your heel? In el talón. Aquellos que son mexicanos, ¿verdad? No en el talón del cheque, pero en el talón. En el talón. ¿Tú, mamá? ¿Sí? No, that's your hand. Yes. Sí, come over here. Come over here. Let me pray for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll, we'll wait for that person with your heel. In the name of Jesus. 
finger be healed and be healed now in the name of Jesus. Take it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just move your, just move your leg right there where you're at. That, that somebody's being healed in the leg. Just, just move it. Just do your, do that movement. The presence of God is real. Amen. It's here this morning. Yes. It's here. That presence is here this morning. The presence of God is is here, and it just, I mean, it speaks to you. It teaches you. It shows you things. It'll still speak to you. It'll tell you to do things. It'll tell you to go places. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Praise you, Lord, we thank you for your presence. Yes. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Long Stir up the gift right now. The Bible says that we can stir ourselves up praying in the Holy Ghost. Just stir up the gift of God right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Just begin to pray in the Spirit right now. Just begin to pray. Bebende <laughs> Esta bronde, esta bronde, esta bronde, esta bronde le caste kilicandro, shekeve manra sila mai sebrete, oh sacongra, 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 del esta caia, del esta cura, del esta rumba stere mandaira. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for a fresh anointing, Father, the Holy Ghost, upon Pastor Carl and Norman. That they're anointed with fresh oil. And their strength is renewed like the ox, Father. Father, we know that the ox is a, is, is a load-bearing, load-carrying beast, Father. But you said that we would be anointed with fresh oil and we would be able to carry the load, Father. Just your burden is easy, your load is light, Father. We, we, just, we just depend on the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, Father, right now for fresh oil upon them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I speak that out right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody here this morning, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, Maybe you were invited. I don't know. I know a few people here, but maybe you're here and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Everything else will, will end. Everything else will, you know. Oh, there was one person that came to Oral Roberts and he said, Sir, do you know that you prayed for this lady and she died? He said, Young lady, everyone that I pray for at some point will die. <laughs> But you know, one of the things that's most important is when you make Jesus the Lord of your, your life. You can die physically, but eternally you will live forever with Jesus. The Bible says that, that, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, everlasting life, you know what, what everlasting life is? That they know God. It's not that we repent and stuff. When we know God, we have everlasting life. When we begin to know God. And see, this, this, this walk with Christ is not, not, not it's, it's knowing Him. It's having a relationship with Him. It's talking to Him. It's talking to Him like you talk to your wife or your husband or your kids. It's talking to the Holy Ghost every day. It's just talking to Him. It's a relationship. It's, it's just you and God. And He listens to you. He's there. He lives inside of you. But if you've never received Him, if you've never asked Him to come into your heart, today is the day of salvation. Today you can ask Jesus to come into your heart. What is, if there's anyone here that would desire prayer and ask, please pray for me. I want to receive Jesus. Would you raise your hand quickly wherever you're at? I want to pray for you this morning. 
We may all be believers here, but I don't want to end the service without giving an opportunity to receive Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Some of you, while I've been speaking, I'll tell you what happened. You got instruction from God. God showed you what you need to do in circumstances. God showed you what you need to do in a problem. God showed you what you need to do for a certain circumstance that you're going through. And if you'll just follow the Holy Ghost, if you'll just do what God told you to do, you'll come out of it with victory. You'll come. It doesn't seem like you can come out. It doesn't seem like victory might be able to be coming out of this situation. But I'm telling you, if you just follow the Holy Ghost, if you, if you just follow the leading of the Spirit of God inside of you this morning, you just follow Him, you'll go to victory. He'll take you to victory. Amen? Amen. So, it was a, a blessing to be here with you this morning. It's a blessing to share with you. And uh, Pastor Carl, we leave it with you. I want you to just stand there for a moment. Yeah. Um, I just really sense the Lord was just putting that scripture when you talked about fresh oil. Yes. There's people here, you just want, want a fresh anointing, a fresh oil. Just want to invite you to come up here and we'll minister to you. Amen. Amen. If you just want just fresh, just fresh oil on your life today, we'll, we'll minister that to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gracias, Father. Gracias.